And while we are on the subject of the 338 Lapua and trying to get, you know, some good precision out of it, um, the factory burger ammunition, the, when I chronographed it, had a pretty big extreme spread. It was like 70 feet per second. So I wasn't really, you know, I expected better than that. When If I'm going to buy a quote-unquote premium grade ammo, I want it to perform better than 70 MOA. I would expect 50 or less, maybe 40 or less would be appropriate for spending that kind of money on some ammo. Uh, I hadn't actually shot any factory Lapua ammo out of it yet. I may try that just to see if, <laughs> just to see what happens. And another thing is the factory burger ammo. This gun has a 30, uh, 30 inch barrel, factory barrel on it. Uh, so a lot of other 338 Lapuas have like a 24, 26. If you're lucky, maybe uh, a 28 inch barrel uh, for a factory gun. And when I chronographed this ammo, this factory ammo, I only got an average of about 2,760 feet per second or something like that. For a 300 grain uh, burger bullet and I was thinking you know if you look up on their website I think it says 2750 but their test barrel that they tested out of it wasn't 30 inches it was like 26 or 28 inches so I was actually expecting it to be on a little higher than that like I was expecting maybe 2800 2810 2820 somewhere in there and it did not even it barely broke what their advertised velocity is for that ammunition so it, i would expect if you were to shoot it out of a shorter barrel like a 26 or 28 inch barrel it would probably have less than what they say it does and i'm like man if you're buying some factory burger ammo and it's not performing to at least what it says it's supposed to do um I'm pretty kind of disappointed in that. You know, I expected more from it. Uh, with that being said, I also had some factory uh, cellular and billet, like some cheap ammo just to shoot. And they were also 300 grain open tip match. I don't know what bullet SMB is using. There's no telling uh, or what kind of gunpowder they're using. But it got me over 2850. It was a whole 110 or 115 per second. Uh, feet per second faster than the burger ammunition and not only that the powder burned cleaner there was not nearly as much smoke as the burger and it burned cleaner uh, when I had to swab the barrel out it was cleaner after I'd shot the S&B than after I'd shot the burger so I don't know what kind of gunpowder they're using in that S&B that cheaper ammo but it it definitely burns cleaner and it's got higher velocity now, as far as accuracy goes, it didn't do any better than the burger. It was about the same. It still shot terribly out of this gun. Uh, but like I said in the previous video, I'm expecting that to be because of a few things, possibly something wrong with the rifle. Somewhere, either the action in the action where it mates to the chassis or possibly in the bolt and the firing pin area, um, Something causing some sort of accuracy issue there, but while we're talking about it, and uh, in another video that I posted, uh, there was a comment on there about max effective range, and so maximum effective range, it, as far as the literature is concerned, uh, historically, it basically means you, you know once you hit the transonic zone. Um, you know, right before the bullet goes subsonic, uh, you're right when you hit that transonic zone. And the reason why is because historically, um, bullets of yesterday were not made as good as they are today. And so they did have some issues decades ago with transitioning from supersonic to subsonic. And so 
when they say the max effective range is so and so thousand yards for this cartridge, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about the bullets we're using now. You know, they're not like in my experience shooting long range or extreme range. Uh, modern bullets do not really have much of an issue going through that transonic zone. Um, the one thing that I have seen and that does happen is that there's a little bit of a shift in the vertical and the trajectory. And that's caused because the, the bullet, once it goes subsonic, the supersonic pressure is now in front of the bullet and not behind it and it's not trying to fight it as much and the air density drops tr uh, dramatically in that area so when the air density drops really low in front of the bullet it's no longer trying to fight its way through mud or something you know like on the way to the target it's no longer experiencing a, a, a really really high rate of deceleration um once it goes subsonic, you know, around 1,100 feet per second or less, uh, the bullet from that point on is not slowing down as much per yard, if that makes sense. Up to that point, it's slowing down a lot per yard. You know, it's slowing down very, very rapidly because it's trying, you know, it's trying to fight and keep that supersonic uh, pressure behind it and the bullets in front of this, you know, that the speed of sound basically. So, um, as far as maximum effective range goes, they say the maximum effective range is only 1900 yards for this. And I had mentioned in that video that I'm planning on taking, uh, taking this thing out to 3000 yards or maybe a little further. And yeah, you know, that's all that is. It's just an old school uh, thing. It's just old school terminology as far as max effective range goes. It has to do with bullets back then. Uh, they were likely using Sierra Match Kings, which 40 years ago, they may have been made a little differently than they are now. Uh, you know, they may have changed some of the design up to this point to mitigate that transonic zone. Uh, but now we've got other bullets out there, highly specialized ones that are specifically designed to shoot past the transonic zone. Like with the shy tac cartridges, the 375 and the 408, uh, if you buy the shy tac balance flight bullets, they are specifically designed to handle transitioning from supersonic to subsonic. And then, like, the bullets that I like to shoot, um, you know, the higher-end stuff, uh, the Warner Tool Company Flatline bullets, they actually offer a modification to those bullets to where you can have this, this modification done called the tub ring mod, where they cut a little ring around the nose of the bullet, and supposedly, as it transitions from supersonic to subsonic, it will transition better and have a better trajectory in the a smoother tra uh, change in trajectory in that zone. And though I haven't actually tested that out yet, uh, but the bullet I'm planning on using when I do eventually rebarrel this rifle, I'm going to do it in a one in seven twist in 300 Norma, a 31 inch, just straight uh, inch, uh, 1.2 inch barrel. And I'm going to be using the Patriot Valley Arms 241 grain Seneca. And the reason why is because that 241 grain Seneca has a really, really high ballistic coefficient. The G1 is like 1.13. And I'm not exactly sure what the G7 is, but it's really high. It's like 0.75 or 0.6 or something like that. Close, you know, close to 0 0.6, 0 0.75, 0 0.8. Uh, or, sorry, 0.575, let me back up, or 0.58 is, you know, for a G7. So it's a, an extremely high ballistic coefficient bullet, bullet but, uh, and the reason why it is is because it's so long and sleek and it's made out of solid copper and it's turned on a lathe and all that, 
Uh, and so that's the reason why I need a one and seven twist to be able to properly stabilize it. Uh, the Factory Savage comes with a one and nine twist barrel on it. And so it's more than adequate to launch these 300 grain. These are the Nosler RDF, which I'm going to be testing out of this. I've shot the 300 grain burgers and I've shot the 285 grain ELDs and everything out of the other 338 Lapua that I had that was the same rifle. And they shot okay, uh, you know, but like I said, that, you know, like I've said in other videos, that gun just never shot just amazing. So I never really did take it out and shoot it at long range. Because, I mean, if it's not going to shoot better than one, you know, not going to shoot at least one minute of angle, one, you know, basically one inch at 100 yards, it's not worth dragging it out to the range, uh, out to the pipeline, and trying to stretch it out to 1500 or 2000 yards or whatever because unless you're going to set something a target the size of a building out there you're not going to hit it so uh yeah as far as max effective range goes uh, the max effective range generally means tran when it hits the transonic zone about one about mach 1.1 two down to Mach 1.1 somewhere in there that's about where they say the max effective range is and so for a 308 depending on the bullet you're using that's around 800 to a thousand yards but we all know they'll shoot way further than that um, I've personally shot them in a 16 inch barrel out to 1800 uh, and I've hit targets as small as 10 inches with that 16 inch gun running really low velocity like uh, like 2500 feet per second or less because you know you can't you lose a lot of velocity with a short barrel uh, and so i'm shooting well past the transonic zone at that point like thousand yards past it and still having decent accuracy so as far as its max effective range it kind of really depends on how you are behind the rifle i think uh, I think that really comes down to the shooter and not so much the equipment when it, when it comes to max effective range. So that's just what I wanted to say about that. I wanted to say a few words, you know, regarding that comment and kind of explain what that means. So again, we'll see you guys next time in the next video. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. If you would, drop a comment or a like or share. And we will see you guys next time in the next video.